Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is DC current divider rule. Our objective is to learn to apply the DC current divider rule to parallel circuits to quickly and directly solve for unknown current values. The key words are quickly and directly. This should appeal to those of you that have better things to do than perform tedious circuit analysis and repetitive calculations. Whatever you choose to do during the spare time is up to you, but the point is you have more time to do it if you learn to use the current divider rule correctly. I will admit up front that the current divider rule is a shortcut normally reserved for special case scenarios, and in comparison to the voltage divider rule, is relatively infrequently employed in circuit analysis. This being said, when presented with an occasion in which the current divider rule can be employed, it is as useful as finding an eye-poking stick when you need to poke someone in the eye. Although this lecture deals exclusively with the current divider rule application to simple parallel DC circuits, we will have ample time and occasion to revisit the current divider rule applied to various branches of more complicated series parallel circuits. As a preparatory exercise, consider this parallel circuit where a voltage source of an unknown magnitude provides 300 milliampers of source current to a parallel combination of a 30 ohm and a 60 ohm resistor. I invite you to solve for the current through each resistor using the quickest and most direct means available. Again, I'm interested only in the current through each element. While entertaining, I am not interested in total resistance, voltage, nor power. As fascinating as this information may be, all I want to know is the current through each element in this system. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. First, let's perform some simplification of this circuit. The total resistance seen by the source for a parallel combination of a 30 ohm and a 60 ohm resistor is 20 ohms. Supply voltage is equal to source current times total resistance. Substituting our given values demonstrates the supply voltage must establish a 6 volt differential across this parallel circuit. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. E equals V1, which equals V2, and they both equal 6 volts. We can now use Ohm's law to determine the current through each particular resistor. Current is equal to voltage over resistance. I1 equals V1 over R1. Substituting our given values demonstrates I1 equals 200 milliampers. Similarly, I2 equals V2 over R2. Substituting our given values demonstrates I2 equals the remaining 100 milliampers. Before we move on, you note that the smaller 30 ohm resistor presents a path with half the resistance of the 60 ohm path. As a result, current through the 30 ohm resistor is twice that of the 60 ohm resistor. Conversely, the larger 60 ohm resistor presents a path with twice the resistance of 30 ohm path, and as a result, current through the 60 ohm resistor is half that of the 30 ohm resistor. It makes sense. If you think about it, it's almost like source current is dividing through these resistors inversely proportional to the resistance value. More on this observation in a moment. Although we did get correct answers, you will note this analysis necessitated we first solve for total resistance, then solve for voltage, then solve for current through each individual resistor, our properties of interest. If current is our property of interest, this method is a waste of time and given the number of steps involved, too prone to human error. Perhaps a quicker and more direct means of obtaining current through elements exists. This method is the current divider rule. As this preparatory exercise was meant to illustrate, source current inside a parallel circuit divides inversely proportional to resistance. The DC current divider rule is a simple inverse proportionality equation that allows a user to quickly and directly solve for current through an element of interest without having to solve for total resistance nor voltage values. For a parallel circuit consisting of two elements, the DC current divider rule states that the current through one resistor of interest, I1, is equal to the resistance of the element not of interest, R0, divided by the summation of resistances constituting the parallel relationship, in this case R1 plus R0, times the incoming current, I in. Note the spelling of one and not. Make this formula a lot easier to use given you're often presented with numerically identified resistors one and two. Consider the DC current divider rule set up to solve for I1. R1 is our one resistor of interest. R2 is our resistor not of interest. Current through the resistor of interest, I1, is equal to the resistance of the element not of interest, in this case R2, divided by the summation of these resistors, R1 plus R2, times incoming current, I in, in this case 300 milliampers. Substituting in our given values, quickly and directly yields I1 to be 200 milliampers without the necessity of first determining total resistance nor voltage. A similar application of the DC current divider rule for I2 demonstrates the current through the resistor of interest, in this case I2, 
is equal to the resistance of the element not of interest, in this case R1, divided by the summation of these resistors, R2 plus R1, times incoming current I in, in this case 300 milliampers. Substituting in our given values quickly and directly yields I2 to be the remaining one third of 300 milliampers or 100 milliampers, again without the time consuming necessity of first determining total resistance nor voltage. In summary, the same correct results, but much, much quicker. If the DC current divider rule seems too easy, rest assured, there are ample opportunities to screw it up. First, stay organized. Which resistor are you interested in? Which resistor are you not interested in? Pick one and remember which one you picked. You'll note the choice of the resistor of interest only affects the numerator, i.e. the top portion of the ratio. The rest of the formula remains the same for both resistors. Additionally, realize the summation of the two resistors in the denominator needs to be enclosed in parentheses if you're foolish enough to try to enter this formula in your calculator in one go. My advice is to enter the formula into your calculator in stages. First evaluate the inverse proportionality, then multiply the inverse proportionality by incoming current. Calculators always follow the order of operations. Make sure you do too. Even with these complications, there's really no excuse for screwing it up because there are easy means of checking your work. First, you should realize more current should travel through the smallest resistor in a parallel relationship and less current should travel through the largest resistor in a parallel relationship. This should be pretty self-evident. Secondly, Kirchhoff's current law, what goes in must come out. If 300 milliampers of source current comes into this parallel relationship, 200 plus 100 or 300 milliampers does indeed come out. Lastly, voltage across elements in parallel is the same. 200 milliampers through a 30 ohm resistor constitutes a 6 volt drop as does 100 milliampers through a 60 ohm resistor. If you get results that suggest otherwise, you are doing it wrong and you need to perform a tactical retreat and reassess your data. Put your understanding of the DC current divider rule to the test with this example. Given a parallel relationship of RX, a 620 ohm resistor, and RY, a 470 ohm resistor, known to experience 40 milliampers of incoming current, see if you can use the current divider rule to solve for current through each resistor. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The DC current divider rule set up to solve for IX is equal to the resistance of the element not of interest, in this case RY, divided by the summation of these two resistors, Rx plus Ry, times incoming current, I in, in this case, 40 milliampers. Substituting our given values yields Ix to be 17.2 milliampers. We could use another application of the DC current divider rule to solve for Iy. However, I suggest a far more efficient means of doing so, namely Kirchhoff's current law. Given 40 milliampers of current enters the parallel relationship and 17.2 milliampers is routed through Rx, an algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's current law equation for this parallel relationship suggests that Iy equals In minus Ix. Substituting our given values yields Iy to be the remaining 22.8 milliampers. As a means of checking our work, another application of the current divider rule set up to solve for Iy similarly demonstrates 22.8 milliampers of current is traveled through Ry. As a final means of checking our work, you'll note an application of Ohm's law demonstrates 17.2 milliampers of current traveling through a 620 ohm resistor results in a roughly 10.7 volt drop, as does 22.8 milliampers routed through a 470 ohm resistor. Voltage across these parallel elements is indeed the same, and what comes in does indeed come out. Really, that's all there is to say about the current divider rule besides this. It is a special use tool and only works in special occasions. To use an analogy, if you wanted to spook a herd of buffalo into hurling themselves to death over a steep cliff and harvesting portion of their bodies for use as food, shelter, and hunting implements, as did the pre-contact Blackfoot Indians did at Umpushkun, there are two necessary requirements for a successful hunt. One, a herd of buffalo, and two, a cliff. Lacking any one of these two critical elements means your tribe goes cold and hungry. This is meant to apply that the current divider rule does yield results but does require a certain scenario in which it is utilized. The current divider rule is reserved for scenarios in which incoming current is known and divides into two parallel paths with known resistances. In theory, current should be as easy to manipulate as voltage. However, in practice, the deployment of an ammeter to measure current in a real circuit is not nearly as easy as a voltmeter. 
The primary complication stems from an ammeter's requirement that it be placed in series with the element it is to measure current through. This necessitates the circuit be powered off, the circuit broken at its chosen point of insertion, the ammeter then placed in series with the element it is intended to measure current through, and then the circuit powered back on. This is a serious drag when compared to the relative ease in which voltage measurements can be made. Often a simple check with a voltmeter across a parallel circuit and then a simple manipulation of Ohm's law to solve for current is far easier and faster than using an ammeter in the current divider rule. Lastly, there is more than one version of the current divider rule and be careful which one you use. There's current divider rules for three parallel elements, four parallel elements, and current divider rules for any number of parallel elements. Do not use these methods. Use this one. Like I said, the current divider rule as I've presented it is a rarely used tool to begin with and memorizing other even more rarely used tools is an absolute waste of your time. In summary, limit the tools in your toolbox to tools that you will actually use. Most likely you will use this version of the current divider rule. You will most definitely use it on a quiz or an exam. Hint, hint. Finally, finally, you'll know we applied the current divider rule exclusively to simple parallel combinations of two elements. However, it's a little more useful than you may initially suspect. Consider a series parallel configuration of three elements where current through unknown resistor R1 is known to be 150 milliamperes. Known resistors R2 and R3 are in parallel with one another. Despite the more complicated circuit, this is a perfect setup for the current divider rule. Incoming current is known, as are the two resistances in a parallel combination. I invite you to use the current divider rule and Kirchhoff's current law to solve for I2 and I3. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Presented without comment, you should find I2 to be 57.1 milliamperes and I3 to be the remaining 92.9 milliamperes. As a means of confirming our work, you'll note more current travels through the smaller resistor and less current travels through the larger resistor. And what comes in does indeed come out. Lastly, an application of Ohm's law to either resistor demonstrates both R2 and R3 experience a 52 volt drop. Why? because voltage across elements in parallel is the same. We'll examine the electrical properties of series parallel circuits in later lectures. Until then, that's all I've got for you today. In conclusion, this lecture presented the current divider rule and applied it to several simple parallel DC circuits. We found it quickly and directly solved for unknown current quantities without having to solve for total resistance nor intermediate voltage values. The time you save is valuable. The current divider is quick, it's direct, and it's effective. Remember to review these techniques as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.